chapter 52 of Shakespeare, and it's sort of about the dark lady of the sonnets, Amelia Lanier, was certainly well known to Shakespeare. She was the young mistress of Lord Hunsdon, who had been the patron of the Lord Chamberlain's men and was also related to Robert Johnson, a musician who collaborated with the dramatist on several occasions. She was a poet, too, who at a later date dedicated one of her volumes to the Countess of Pembroke, born Amelia Bassano. She was the illegitimate daughter of Baptist Baptist Bassano, one of a Jewish family from Venice who had become the court physicians. He had died early, and in his youth, Amelia had become the word of the Countess Kent of Kent before attending court, where she, quote, had been favored much of her majesty and many noblemen. And, quote, among these noblemen was the word, old word, Hunsdon, 50 years her senior. But when she became pregnant, she was married off, quote, for color, and quote, to a, quote, minstrel, and quote, named Alphonse Lanier. Huh. Hmm. So she's a mistress and gets married off. Uh -huh. Members of the Bassano family accompanied the performances of Shakespeare's plays in the royal palaces. They were, quote, they were dark-skinned Venetians, uh -huh. and some of Amelia's relatives were described as, quote, black men, unquote. It may not be entirely coincidental, therefore, that Shakespeare wrote a play about a Jewish family in Venice, and that one of the central characters is named as Bassanio. Here we may remark upon Shakespeare's manner of invention. Baptist Bassano is split in two. He becomes Shylock, the Venetian Jewish merchant, <laughs> and also the Venetian Bassano. Shakespeare loves the process of self-division. There may, of course, be some association, too, with Othello, also set in Venice. <laughs> And there is a connection already noted with Rosalind of Love's Labor Lost, who is described as being black as ebony. Emilio Lanier, nay Bassano, appears most clearly in the historical record by way of the journals of Simon Forman, Elizabethan Magnus, whom she consulted over the fortunes of her husband. It is also clear that the good doctor seduced her. Oh, my goodness. They all seduced her. Huh? And that he was neither the first nor the last to do so. It cannot be known if she ever became Shakespeare's lover. And even if she was, uh, whether she is memorialized, as the faithless lady of the sonnets. There is, however, one suggestive detail. Simon Forman notes that Amelia Lanier has a mole beneath her throat. In Sibylline, Shakespeare describes a mole under the breast of the beautiful and chaste Imogen. That's in the Sibylline. So that's what the book says about the reading about Amelia Lanier, the, one of the first women feminist poets in England. And she's possibly the dark lady, though it's speculative. And this is chapter 52. <laughs> you have not. The book of riddles about you, have you? Shakespeare's sonnets. Mm. Mm.
Like what do you think? Why don't I read a poem about it? Yeah, I'm going to read, but I have to get the poem and gather the poems. And really, well, that's a separate issue. This is the introduction to, it's actually about Shakespeare's sonnets and question of the Dark Lady, and it brings up Emily Lanier.